Hello again, my fellow coder. Welcome back to this next lesson in our Fresh Vote series, where we are building a real-world web application from scratch, leveraging Spring Boot and other latest and greatest technologies with respect to the Java language. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get into uh, where we left off in the last video, which was uh, essentially improving the workflow. So the workflow right now is a bit off in that once we've created a feature request and we say save to save the feature request, it sort of dumps us... I think back onto the same page, which is, it was a bit, um, it just wasn't great. It wasn't a great uh, experience in terms of a user experience. Uh, so we want to change that such that um, it dumps us back onto the actual product page, which again, we don't even have, uh, once we've logged in, we can't see the products. We have to go to slash P slash, uh, and then product one. So this is the page that we want to be dumped back to. Uh, so, and, and uh, further to that, we also want to be able to have the, the feature re uh, requests uh, that are associated with the product listed. So actually, let's start there. I think that's uh, that's pretty important. Well, both are important. Let's see if we can get both of them done in this video. So for the p slash product page, that I believe goes to the product, uh, not static images, templates. Uh, so product and products. So products is where we list all the products. Uh, associated to a user, I assume. Uh, and product is a, a singular product, which in this case, I believe is this page. This is the singular product page. <clears throat> so we can confirm that just by, um, oh, no, maybe not save product. That's not the right page. Uh, let's see, product user view, create feature request. Yeah, that looks more like it. So product user view is apparently what I decided to call it. Uh, so this is the page that we need to tinker with. So uh, inside of here, we have a form. The form allows us to create a feature request. So the, the form um, envelops this button, uh, but does not envelop the, the header here, the the uh, head h1 text so probably below the h1 text is where we want to get started with our, our change um and we want to essentially list out all of the features that are associated with this particular product so each of those would be in its own div on the on its own line uh so let's do that so div so we can do a th each right because you want to iterate through every single product feature that we have but how do we get access to the features that belong to a product? Well, it's sort of in this mapping, right? A product was placed on the model, and the product is just a Java object. It's a POJO, a plain old Java object. The product is associated with uh, probably a set of features or a list of features. So if we go to the product.java file, the plain old Java object, loader up, we see that indeed we have a set of features. So we could say product dot the name of the variable, which is just features. Product.features will give us the uh, collection, the set of features. So uh, let's do that. So we do, um, we're iterating through each feature. We'll call it feature, and that is in product.features, right? Product.features, we just looked at that. Uh, where the heck did it go? Did I close it? Oh, I closed it. Uh, but you saw product had a set of features, so we can say product.features to get access to those. It will iterate through those features and assign each one individually to um, a div, because we're th eaching. We're doing a for each loop over the divs, um, and uh, or rather over the features and assigning them to its own individual div with the variable name called feature, okay? So we've seen this before, but I'm just sort of re-reviewing stuff because that's always a good thing to do. Uh, and then for each feature, what do we want to do? Well, for now, let's just prove that we're doing something useful. So let's just output simply the text of the features. I, I don't know. Uh, what does the feature have? Um, feature has title, description, status, product. Okay. So a feature has a title. So we'll just list out the title of the feature. So feature.title. And we'll just put that in a pan, uh, span. So we should see um, each feature request's title appear on um, their own individual line on the front end. So if I refresh this page, now that I've saved it, saved it, there you go. Let's make it better is the title for um, that last feature request. So if I do another feature request, create another feature request, and let's say this, um, you know, uh, add uh, better UI features for X, Y, Z or something. Um, you know, I'm not happy with the way the flow of this program works, you know, please make it better. Save. So now when we clicked on save, that was, that was the other thing I wanted to uh, tweak was let's have it go back to the page that we were just on, right? So let's just, well, let's go back to the page manually by cl clicking the back button. 
twice. Now, as you can see, add better UI features for XYZ is also appearing, right? Cool, so that's good. But now let's go forward to our uh, feature page where we click on save and let's have that save button redirect us back to um, that, uh, what is it, product user view page. So that should be fairly straightforward. Uh, we should have a feature, so if I go to my, my uh, web package to look at my controllers, we have a feature controller. I'm going into the feature controller because I'm saving a feature. So when I click the save button on a feature, I assume it should interact with some sort of a feature controller. That's how I group my controllers based on essentially domain objects based on the database tables or the uh, POJOs that we have um, that we've created. So uh, sure enough, that is the the uh, convention that I've used here and is working. Uh, so, uh, or not working, it's that's the correct way, the correct place to look, essentially, is I'm saying, how did I know to go to feature controller? That's what I was just explaining there. Um, I go because I'm saving a feature, and therefore I probably have a controller related to that particular um, entity, domain, object, POJO, whatever you want to call it. So here it is, feature.save, and then we do a redirect back to products, product ID, features, feature ID. Right, so this explains why we just keep going back to the same um, feature when we click the save button, right? When we click save, we're on the same page. That's because of right here, right? So let's have a redirect to the products slash P. So we need to change this to be, you know, redirect to products slash P slash, and then the name of the product, which I believe we can say, um, well, how do we get access to the product here, right? So hopefully we can say feature dot get product get product. Now we can say that, but whether or not that's actually populated when we click save, we'll see. Um, hopefully it is. It should be. Um, Feature.getProduct.get um, name published, get name. I think it's the name of the product. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the name of the product. Now it's almost the name of the product. We're gonna have to, I'll, I'll just do this and I'll replace what we have here with uh, what I've just created. So redirect to product slash p slash the product's name. Um, but I'll show you uh, one way that this d won't work. So it should work for the first product, but it won't work for the second product. Uh, but that's my hypothesis. We'll see if it actually turns out that way. So I rebooted the server. So now when I refresh this page, it's going to ask me to log in. So let me log back in. Let me click the save button on the uh, new feature request here. And okay, 404. So products slash p slash product one. Um, I th thought that was the right URL, but I could absolutely be mistaken, obviously. Uh, product one. Oh, it's not slash product slash. Okay, so it's just slash P. Uh, my bad. So it was my bad. So it's not slash product slash P, it's just slash P. Cool. Save that. It'll reboot the server. Take a sip of coffee. <sighs> Good stuff. Refresh. Uh, let's go back. Oh, it's going to ask me to log in when I go back. But hopefully that'll, uh, not to the dashboard. I want to go back to the feature. Do I have the, I don't have the feature page. Um, 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 um. So I need to go to slash P slash product one. Oh, but then how do I get to this feature request? I need a, oh, let me just create a new one because I'm lazy. Uh, another request, blah, blah. So now when I click on save for this feature request, hopefully it goes back to, there we go, sweet. Excellent. So now the flow makes sense. It goes back to product one here. Um, and the, uh, the the case that it, this won't work, in my opinion, um, my hypothesis is, is here. When we have a, a uh, product name that will require some URL encoding. What the heck do I mean by URL encoding? Uh, I mean this. So if I want to go and see this product, I need to go slash P slash and then the name of the product, right? Well, what's the name of the product? Product number sign two, right? This is the this is the URL that our code is going to construct, which is right here. Redirect to slash P slash the name of the product, right? Slash P slash the name of the product. If I go, if I hit the enter button, it's not happy, right? So uh, why is it not happy? Well, it, it hasn't encoded this correctly. I believe the number sign needs to be encoded right? Uh, because the number sign in a URL means something, okay? The number sign is a way to, I forget the, in, in HTML terms, what it's called. It's like a, you can use it as part of an anchor, um, like an href, 
uh, and, and it just goes to this, a different spot in the same page. So it doesn't try to go to a different page. It, it goes to the same spot in the current page. It tries to scroll down to a certain spot. So uh, in other words, this percent or this number sign needs to be encoded. Okay, just like it did the space here, it turned the space into percent 20. It needs to turn this um, pound symbol or this number sign into percent something, right? So the whole point I'm getting at here is we need to encode it. So the feature dot get name needs to actually be encoded first. So how do we do that? Um, I think it's URL encoder. Yeah, so java.net has a URL encoder dot encode. Yes, so we encode a string and the string we want to encode is that one, right? Oh, and then it wants a, um, it, it wants, uh, th this is deprecated. It needs a comma and then it wants the, um, what is it, character set or something? Let me just double check and see. It wants the ENC. What is ENC? The name of the supported character encoding. Yeah, which is typically like UTF-8. UTF, oop, UTF-8, right? Now there's probably a constant for UTF-8 here, but I'm being lazy and using it. Um, and then when you do that, it's saying, hey, you need to, uh, this uh, encode throws uh, uh, an unsupported encoding exception, uh, potentially throws an unsupported encoding exception. So we need to handle that. Uh, the two ways to do it, you can uh, tag a throws declaration onto your uh, method signature, or you can wrap it with a try catch and handle the, the error yourself. Um, you know what, let's handle our, the error ourselves. I wasn't going to, but let's make it a bit fancy. We've got a bit of time here. Um, and let's assign this to be a string. Right, this is the uh, product uh, encoded product name equals like so. And then we'll have it go to the encoded product name here. And then what we'll do is we will surround this with a try catch statement. And when we catch this error, what we'll do is we'll, we'll say the encoded product name, um, no, we'll return a different will return uh, a different URL. We'll redirect back to, uh, I don't know, dashboard, for, for instance. So if for some reason we can't figure out the encoding properly, we'll just send it back to the dashboard um, as a fallback, right? So that way the user won't see a big ugly error message. It just sort of takes them to a different place than they thought they would be. So it just, it'd be a bit strange. And what we could do here, we could log a warning. Oh, I don't have a logger. We could log a warning in our uh, log file, so we can do logger log equals logger factory dot get uh, logger, and the class is feature controller dot class. Uh, I'm going through this part very quickly, and you might be saying, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, Trevor, what's going on here? How, what, what's all this stuff? I've never seen this before." Um, this is SLF4J logger. I don't want to get into this right now. Um, if you're not familiar with logging, um, it's pretty boring. This is pretty much the same thing that you have to do every time. It comes from uh, SLF4J, is what I use. Um, anyway, it's you just pump in this code, make sure you import from SLF4J and the uh, class that you're logging needs to be the class that you're in uh, for optimal performance. And then we can say log.warn um, and we can say unable to encode the URL string. And then we can actually pass in feature.getproduct.getName. Um, and then we can say redirecting to dashboard instead of this, um, of the intended uh, product uh, user view page or something like that, whatever. This, this message is going, only going to be uh, shown to us, the developers. This won't be shown to end users, so you can be as cryptic or as non-cryptic as you want to be. Okay, so let's go back to the... Uh, let's go back and log in because we've rebooted our server many times. Let's go into this product. So, uh, oh shoot, I don't know what the encoded value of that, uh, of a pound symbol is. Um, URL encoder. Encoder decode. Uh, so it's product number two, encode. There we go, that's the encoded URL. So then we can go slash P slash that. That's how we get here. So now we can test this. We can test to make sure that our, our uh, code that we have there will encode it to be this value when we create a feature request and say save, right? When we say save is when it's gonna try to redirect back to this URL with the encoding. 
so let's say create feature request um you know uh i don't know product to feature request you know blah 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 and say save this is the moment of truth interesting so it encoded it with a plus symbol but that works too the it's either plus or percent 20 those are both sort of equivalent in the in terms of encoding uh, but it worked we went back to the where we expected to go back to okay sweet now uh the only other thing that we can really do here i will tack this on to the end of this video because i haven't done a video in a bit um is to make this uh name of the feature request clickable right because we want to be able to click on this get back to the feature request that way we can we have this appropriate flow thing happening so uh how do i do this i go to the product user view page Yes, where we list out all the features and then the features. So now we should make these clickable. So instead of a span where it just shows the feature title. So instead of just showing the title here, this should actually be clickable. How do you make it clickable? Well, you make it into an anchor tag, right? With an href. Um, and the text for the href will be what we had here, the feature title. So instead of a span, it'll be here, right? So now if I refresh this, it'll turn into a link, but the link won't go anywhere. If I click this link, it's just gonna go back to the same spot. We want it to go to the actual feature request. How do we make it go to the feature request? Well, we look at the feature controller um, request mapping here. So it should go to slash product, slash product ID, slash features, slash feature ID, right? So let's copy this. Let's go back to our page. So the, the, a, the href here will need to be uh, augmented uh, with time leaf. Right, and then we use this time leaf URL um, formatting, like so, just like we've done down here. Right, I'm just sort of cheating based off of this. So this has a product ID and features. So I'm going to copy this because this gives me my product ID. But then I also need to specify a feature ID, which I'll put a comma and say feature ID equals uh, feature feature yes dot ID. And here I don't know if I can say can I say product ID here. I might need to refer to fee. Well, we'll see because product is on the model up here. Uh, we have put it on there, so that might work. Uh, let's see if that works. Let me save it, go back, refresh, hover over this. Yeah, look at that product slash two. So I'm looking down here in the bottom left, product slash two slash features slash six. So when I click on this, it goes to our feature request. When we click save, we go back to this page. We can go to the dashboard. Fantastic. Now, the only other step here is when I click on the product, um, it, it goes into a different view. So maybe we should have some, in the next video, we should have some sort of workflow where we can get back to the, you know, um, the, the actual user view of the product, right? So maybe that there should be a link in here, or maybe there should be a link in here for like, you know, edit versus view, or I don't know. So that's what we'll sort of discuss in the next video, but there you go. Uh, we hit a, a good stopping point in this video. Hopefully you learned a ton. Uh, as always, if I went too fast or if, or if you have a given, you know, suggestion or whatever, leave a comment below. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do feel free to subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Um, I love to teach, so I would love to have you as a subscriber if you enjoy my teaching style. Um, otherwise, you know, keep on being you and I uh, can't wait to see you in the next video. All right, take care of yourself. Bye for now.